Did you know that prostate medication can really affect your eyes? I talked to Dr. Rena Malik, an expert urologist and pelvic surgeon who is going to join us today to help explain. Thank you, Dr. Sayana Gori, for having me on your channel. I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and thank you for joining me to talk about medications that can affect your prostate and affect your eyes. If you're a man, especially one who's a little bit older, you might have heard of a brand name medication called Flomax. And that's because it's one of the most common medications out of a category of medications called alpha blockers that we prescribe for men who have urinary problems or bladder problems related to having an enlarged prostate or BPH. However, many urologists, myself included, sometimes forget to tell you that it can affect what happens during your cataract surgery, even if you take it only for a short period of time. Now, before I get into the details, let's talk a little bit about BPH itself. BPH or benign prosthetic hyperplasia is incredibly common among men, especially as they get older. By the time men hit 60, about 50% have BPH, and by 80, 80%. So if you're above 50, there's a good chance you're either already dealing with symptoms, might be soon, and at the very least, you know someone who is. So what exactly is BPH? It's essentially when your prostate, which is a gland that sits underneath your bladder and around your urethra, gets enlarged. As it gets bigger, it can start blocking off the flow of urine, which can give you symptoms. Some of the symptoms can be like having a weak stream, having difficulty starting urination, the stream that stops and starts, or waking up quite a bit at night, or feeling like you can't really empty your bladder. Other times you might feel like you have to go very frequently during the day, you can't hold your urine, and you even have accidents if you don't make it in time, or you dribble a little bit after you urinate. If you wanna learn more about this condition, make sure you check out my YouTube channel where I have a number of videos talking about BPH, why this happens, how to prevent it, and all the different treatment options. Now, one of the most common medications we use to treat this enlarged prostate are those alpha blockers that we talked about earlier, which include things like Tamsulosin, which is the brand name Flomax, Alfuzosin, Psilidosin, Doxazosin, and Terazosin. And these medications work by relaxing the smooth muscle in the prostate and the bladder neck. This makes it easier for urine to flow past, and they work. They help men improve symptoms. Specifically, their stream will get stronger, their symptoms will decrease within days to weeks. Tamsulosin is very popular because it is very effective, and it tends to have fewer side effects compared to some of the older medications in the class. However, this is the one that also has the most impact on eyes during cataract surgery. And among all these medications, Tamsulosin has been strongly associated with a condition called intraoperative floppy iris syndrome, or IFIS, and this can make cataract surgery more difficult and riskier. Now, the other alpha blockers like alfuzosin and psilidosin can also increase the risk, although to a lesser extent. I'm gonna turn it over to my friend and expert ophthalmologist, Dr. Sayanagori, to explain exactly why your ophthalmologist or cataract surgeon needs to know about your BPH meds. Thanks for that background, and Dr. Mullick is exactly right. This is such an important subject because it is actually quite common, and a lot of people really do not know about it. It is common because just like BPH is very common, especially as men get older, cataracts are pretty much universal. This is because having a cataract is a normal aging change. It's just like getting white hair. For most people, a cataract will happen later in life, but no matter what, it's going to happen to everyone eventually. So the overlap of people who take medications for BPH and also will need cataract surgery is very high. And this is why we are talking about how these types of medications can affect your eyes. So specifically, we're talking about alpha blockers like Tamsulosin and how it affects your eyes specifically during cataract surgery. So we know this is a commonly prescribed medication in the urology world, and it can lead to a condition called IFIS or intraoperative floppy iris syndrome. We sometimes call this IFIS for short. This matters a lot during surgery because having floppy iris syndrome can make cataract surgery more complicated. But when surgeons know about it ahead of time, it is something that can be managed with 
proper planning and communication. So what exactly happens in floppy iris syndrome? So in floppy iris syndrome, the iris, which is the part of the eye that gives the eye its color, is primarily affected. The iris, as the name suggests, becomes floppy during surgery, and it can be difficult for the cataract surgeon to manage. This can lead to surgical complications, which we'll get into in a minute, but first let's talk about why floppy iris during cataract surgery is such a bad thing. So before cataract surgery, it's very, very important that the patient's pupil is well dilated. Dilated means that the pupil becomes bigger in size with the use of special eye drops. This is because the lens of the eye, which has the cataract in it, sits right behind the iris. So the cataract surgeon, if they want to take the lens of the eye out and put in a new lens, they need to be able to visualize that well. So if the iris does not open up well, the lens behind it cannot be seen well. This is where dilation becomes so important. Now in patients with floppy iris, that dilation can become difficult or it may not stay well dilated. So instead of the cataract surgeon having a nice large opening to operate through, it could become very small, making the cataract behind there very, very hard to visualize. So a well dilated pupil is really, really helpful when you're doing cataract surgery. The eye is a small space as it is, so when you're talking about the operating space being reduced by 50%, it can become very, very difficult to get through eye surgery. So in addition to not having great pupil dilation, floppy iris syndrome can also mean that the iris behaves a little unpredictably. So there's been cataract surgeries where I have started the case and the pupil looks totally fine, it's nice and dilated, and then we get to the part where we actually need to remove the cataract. And just in a matter of seconds, the iris starts misbehaving and it comes down, it becomes really floppy and it starts billowing and it's getting in the way of our instruments. And this is actually really, really difficult to deal with, especially if it's not something that we had planned for. And this is really where the name floppy iris comes from, because instead of saying nice and taut and dilated, the iris starts to sort of billow and become wavy and get in the way of the surgeon. Now, some of the complications can be injury to the iris itself, even bleeding inside the eye, or difficulty getting the cataract out. It can even impact getting the new lens into the eye once the cataract has been removed. Now, you may be thinking, well, if I've already taken all these types of BPH medications, then there's no way that I can sort of go back in time and not take them. So I've already taken them. So what does it matter now? Well, it matters because when you tell your cataract surgeon that you are on these medications, it sort of alerts us to be more prepared for this situation. And there are many ways to do that. Some are through special medications that we may give you before the surgery to help keep that iris in position. And the other thing that we will do is make sure that we have additional tools available so that we can physically open up the iris if we need to during surgery. Some of these are called a malugan ring, which is a ring that's placed inside the eye that helps to open up the pupil. Another type of device is iris hooks, where we actually are able to hook the iris back and keep it out of the way. So being able to do this ahead of time before we actually start the process of removing the cataract is not only much safer, but it also makes the surgery much easier for the surgeon, which is better for you as a patient. Also, when it comes to the preoperative discussion, it's important for the surgeon to know about any potential floppy iris that may happen so that they can have a better discussion with you to make you a more well-informed patient for anything that could happen during surgery and also prepare you for a potentially longer surgery than what might typically happen when there is no floppy iris present. Now, what I was surprised to find out from Dr. Nagori is that even if a person takes this medication for just a few weeks or a couple months, it can still affect your iris. And as urologists, I often prescribe this medication when people come in with kidney stones because it helps relax the ureter or the tube that drains the kidney, making it easier for kidney stones to pass without pain and to avoid surgery. And usually it's for a short period of time. So one of the really strange things about floppy iris syndrome, and most people don't know this, is that the effects of these medications can actually linger for months, even after you have stopped taking them. This means patients can sometimes forget to mention it to their eye doctor because they're no longer on those medications and they may not have been on those medications for even years. But the crazy thing is you can still get floppy iris if you took these medications two, three years ago. So it's really important to know about all the medication use, especially alpha blocker use before cataract surgery. That way we can plan ahead, 
to minimize complications and provide the best outcomes. So if you're on these medications, whether it's Tamsulosin, Alfuzosin, or any of the other ones, the big takeaway is talk to your ophthalmologist about all your medications, but especially alpha blockers. Even if you might have taken them years prior, you definitely don't want a surprise complication in the operating room, and you always want to be prepared. So preoperative screening is key. We know that if a patient is at risk for this, we can use specific tools and techniques to manage it. And it's important to note that other medications can also contribute to floppy iris. So be sure to provide a list of all your current medications, as well as any medications that you may have used in the past for other issues. I want to thank Dr. Malik for coming on and sharing her expertise. And if you guys found this helpful, remember to hit like and subscribe below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.